The year is 1847. Then, as now, London was the financial capital of capitalism. Here, Karl Marx set out to write a document that still has the power to inspire people and terrify the elite. The Communist Manifesto. But what exactly did Karl Marx mean by communism? Let's get one thing clear, Marx did not invent communism. Even in the Middle Ages, monks held property in common and lived a communal lifestyle. In the English Civil War, the revolutionaries wanted to abolish private property. And, as a young radical, Marx was surrounded by workers who wanted to live in communes, like Etienne Cabe, who told his followers to move from Paris to Texas to set up communes, none of which survived. Marx said, communism means abolishing private property, but to get there you need two things, technological progress, so that machines do all the work, and social progress, so that everybody can live a rich, rounded, cultural life. By 1847, Marx was active in the Communist League. These were mainly German workers, they were revolutionaries and wanted men in their own country. It was in this pub, in Soho, London, that Marx and the Communist League sat down in November 1847 to thrash out what does communism stand for? After days of arguing, the workers said to Marx, you go away and write it all down in a manifesto explaining what communism really is. And be quick about it, because the revolution's coming. A spectre is haunting Europe, Marx wrote. The spectre of communism. But it wasn't the spectre of some isolated communes where people shared out the work and the food and practiced free love, though these places existed. Communism, said Marx, can only happen through a working class revolution. All history is the history of class struggles, Marx wrote. In ancient Greece and Rome, it was slave against master, in medieval times, it was the serfs against the lords, sometimes the lords against the king, and sometimes the king against the pope. But industrial capitalism had made things very simple. It's the workers versus the capitalists, a death match. And if the workers win, you get a whole new kind of revolution. You can see where the idea came from. In the 19th century, workers had almost no possessions. They worked 12 hours a day in bleak conditions, and most middle-class people despised them. But Marx said they are the future of humanity. But it didn't happen. Here, in the very same street Marx lived, in poverty, there are now plenty of workers and they own plenty of property and they have no obvious intention of overthrowing capitalism. There is a tension inside Marx's thinking about the working class. Sometimes he says they are destined to overthrow capitalism whatever the ideas they hold in their heads. But at other times he says the workers are going to overthrow the system because they are conscious and educated and have strong ideals. After the revolutions of 1848, Marx spent his life here in London trying to educate socialist-minded workers and form an international party. But what those workers actually built were organisations to help them survive capitalism. Socialist parties, cooperatives and trade unions. In the Communist Manifesto, Marx set out ideas that have remained influential. That the everyday struggles of working people actually lead somewhere to a better society, and that they, the workers, the peasants and the poor, have far more in common with each other across borders than they have with the elite that rules their own country. As the final line of the manifesto says, workers of the world, unite.